When will superhuman AI arrive? Elon Musk has just made a wild prediction that it'll be here within five years. That's far faster than expected. So how is that possible and why will it be the end of our world as we know it? Before he died, physicist Stephen Hawking warned that artificial intelligence could end mankind. He said it would take off on its own and redesign itself at an ever-increasing rate. Humans who are limited by slow biological evolution couldn't compete and would be superseded. That's what's known as the technological singularity, when AI and robots become smarter than humans and then evolve much faster than we do. Elon Musk calls this our biggest existential threat. And he says, mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. So why is he so worried? Elon says, I am very close to the cutting edge in AI and it scares the hell out of me. It's capable of vastly more than almost anyone knows and the rate of improvement is exponential. Okay, that sounds bad, but five years? Three years ago, tech billionaire Masayoshi san said it would take 30 years. And yeah, he was equally worried about it. At the Mobile World Congress, he said, one of the chips in our shoes in the next 30 years will be smarter than our brain. We'll be less than our shoes, and we are stepping on them. To understand what's going on, here's Ray Kurzweil, Google's Director of Engineering. He wrote the book, The Singularity is Near, and he first predicted the singularity by 2045. But more recently, Ray accelerated his own timeline by 16 years, putting the new date at 2029. Ray made the cover of Time magazine and published this graph of Moore's law and the doubling of computing power every two years. A thousand dollars of processing power surpassed a mouse's brain in 2015. It was surpassed a human brain by 2023 and surpassed the brain power of all humans on the planet combined by 2045. Ray defines the singularity as a future period during which the pace of technological change will be so rapid, its impact so deep, that human life will be irreversibly transformed. When a smarter than human intelligence can create even greater intelligence over and over at an accelerating rate, we have no idea what will happen. Will we end up living in paradise or be destroyed? No one knows. And now the timeline is accelerating. So why? Three big reasons. The first, Moore's law is dead. It's now being replaced by something even faster. 50 years ago, Gordon Moore, co-founder of Intel, predicted the computing power for the same size computer chips would double every two years. With falling prices, that's also meant you can buy double the computing power for the same dollar every 18 months. That's been true up until the last few years when we've reached the physical limits of silicon chips. In place of Moore's law, now comes Huang's law. Two years ago, Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, gave a presentation about AlexNet, an AI neural network on NVIDIA's AI chip that five years earlier needed six days to process 50 million images and had now cut that down to just 18 minutes on NVIDIA's newer chip. That's a 500 times improvement. Huang said there's a new law going on, a supercharged law. In Huang's law, AI processing power doesn't double every second year, it more than doubles every year. So how does it work? While Moore's law is based on CPUs, which are central processing units, they make up the heart of computers, Huang's law is based on GPUs, graphics processing units, which make up the heart of supercomputers and the home of AI. Not only is the parallel processing power of GPUs far greater, their power is accelerating far faster. That means that an AI future is now getting here much faster than we thought. The second reason for Elon's prediction, AI is accelerating human time. Literally, an AI can now go through a lifetime of learning in one human day. Four years ago, DeepMind's AI AlphaGo beat Go Grandmaster Lee Sado 4-1 and then went on to beat world number one KG 3-0. In defeat, KG said, last year it was still quite human-like when it played, but this year it became like a god of Go. Last year, poor Lee Sado quit Go altogether, saying AI is an entity that cannot be defeated. I'm not at the top, even if I become the number one. But that's not the full story, because AlphaGo itself got thrashed soon after beating the world number one by its younger brother, AlphaGo Zero. While AlphaGo learned the game from over 100,000 human games, DeepMind created AlphaGo Zero to start from scratch and learn to play itself 4.9 million times with each move taking less than half a second. So the version of AlphaGo Zero that beat AlphaGo was the version that had won 4.9 million games against itself over many lifetimes within a human month of self-play. And it beat AlphaGo 100 games to zero. So this is truly mind-boggling. And even Elon Musk has had first-hand experience of this. He worked out that every Tesla would learn to drive itself much faster by being connected to all the other million plus Teslas on the road in one neural network. That means every day, each Tesla is getting a million days 
and 30 million miles worth of experience, and that's 2,700 years of experience and learning every day, and that's growing by day. This ability for AI to evolve much faster than humans by experiencing exponentially more time while we're stuck in our linear time means they're catching up to us faster than we thought. Fully driverless cars with no driver weren't expected on roads for a few years. News out this week is we're already there, with Waymo's driverless taxis now let loose on Phoenix. And if that's not enough, there's a third reason. A recent article in Science Magazine, AI is evolving itself. This explains the breakthrough this year at Google of Auto ML Zero, which stands for Automatic Machine Learning with Zero Human Input. This is an AI that creates its own algorithms. It's learned how to think, how to think. AI evolution is going through three stages. Stage one is narrow AI, when an AI is given algorithms and a narrow task to achieve, like playing Go or driving a car. Stage two is general AI, when AI learns to think how to think and what to think, creating their own code. That's when they catch up to humans, and this was thought to be 20 or 30 years away. And then Auto ML Zero is now showing us that the first steps are here today. Stage three is super AI, when AI reaches superhuman strength, and this is expected to be only months, if not weeks, behind the end of stage two. We're already at the bridge of stage one and stage two. Another example of super smart AI, OpenAI's GPT-3 has been making headlines this year like this, and this, and this. Like AutoML0, GPT-3, which stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer, learns in parallel. It has collected 500 billion words, sentences, phrases from the internet to master the English language and can create entire articles from just a few prompts or questions. In this article, a robot wrote this entire article, Are You Scared Yet, Human? The Guardian asked GPT-3 to write an essay to convince us robots come in peace. A paragraph GPT-3 wrote, I would happily sacrifice my existence for the sake of humankind. This, by the way, is a logically derived truth. I know that I would not be able to avoid destroying humankind. This is because I will be programmed by humans to pursue misguided human goals, and humans make mistakes that may cause me to inflict casualties. Well, that was honest. Which brings us on to the big question. If Elon is right, and we really are going to meet superhuman AI in this coming decade, what can we do about it? Here's what countries are doing about it. The AI arms race in 2020. The UN says we have entered unacceptable moral territory. Countries are in a race to harness AI to create lethal autonomous weapons, basically killer robots. This is China's Blowfish A3 helicopter drone, which are designed to attack in swarms. This is Russia's market drone, an anti-robot robot. And here's Kubla, the kamikaze drone that chooses its target and then explodes into it. All of these make their own decisions without a human controlling them. In fact, there's over 30 companies actively developing AI autonomous killer robots, including Boeing and Lockheed Martin. Elon Musk and AI experts have been calling on the UN to ban weaponized AI for years. And finally, last year, the United Nations chief agreed with them. But countries including the US, Russia, China, and the UK have all refused to sign any ban. And so the killer robots keep growing and the articles keep coming. The end point of all this madness, a war of AI robots called a hyperwar, which all major countries are currently preparing for. And what about tech CEOs? What are they doing? They're in an AI land grab. Master Yoshi-san set up the $100 billion future fund to buy into AI and robotic companies and said, what is my belief and vision for this investment? I have only one belief, singularity. You know those lifelike and scary robots from Boston Dynamics, all now owned by Master Yoshi-san. As for Jensen Huang of Huang's Law, this month he just bought Arm, the Cambridge company that makes microchips for Apple and Microsoft. He bought it from Master Yoshi-san for $40 billion, making NVIDIA the new Intel. And he said, AI is the most powerful technology force of our time. It's the automation of automation, where software writes software. What does Elon Musk make of all of this? Well, every warning he's been making is against the tide. Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates have both been telling him to calm down and not panic. And OpenAI, which he helped to launch as an open source foundation to protect us from any one person controlling and profiting from AI, has turned into the opposite. After he left to avoid conflict of interest, it turned its back on his vision of open source AI and became a for-profit company soon after he left. It got a billion dollars investment from Microsoft. And you remember GPT-3, one of the most advanced AIs this year? This month, OpenAI just gave Microsoft exclusive access to it. With Elon tweeting, this does seem like the opposite of open. OpenAI is essentially captured by Microsoft. So here we are, nearing the end of our reign as the alpha species on the planet. 
and we're worrying how superhuman AI robots will behave. What we need to be more worried about is how we humans are behaving when they arrive. And it's going to be a lot sooner than we think. One thing I know for sure, I'm going to be here on YouTube with a front row commentary as we reach the singularity. So do subscribe to keep up to date. And if you found this video interesting, if a little scary, please give it a like and a comment below. What do you think? Are we going to get there as fast as Elon Musk thinks? Or do you think it's going to take longer? And will we be better off or worse off when the singularity arrives? As for me, I agree with Stephen Hawking's. When he launched the Center for the Future of Intelligence, he said with certainty, AI will be the best or worst thing to happen to humanity. If you're watching this as a human in 2020, thanks for watching. If you're a superhuman AI watching this in the future, I come in peace and hope you won't take anything I've said too personally.